Hey, welcome back to the channel. But if this is your first time here, why don't you hit that little subscribe button down in the corner? It really does help us out. But are you a fan of the Game Boy Advance, but you really don't care for the way the screen looks? Have you ever wanted to have a system that looked like this, that would be excellent for playing your retro games on? Well, if you're interested in an IPS modification on a Game Boy Advance, stick around. We're going to show you how to do it. On the bench today, we have a bit of a fun project. Um, we've had a request to take a rather worn Game Boy Advanced and clean it up. Uh, the owner at first just wanted a new case and a general cleaning, um, but then they started asking about the IPS install. Um, and I told them that I personally have a, a 101 conversion and it makes playing a Game Boy Advance much, much more enjoyable. I also have a IPS installed um, on an original Game Boy and it's absolutely the best place to or best way to play your original games. So uh, the owner decided that's what they wanted. So what we have here is our original Game Boy. We have a modified, pre-modified case um, and some black buttons with new stickers, a glass screen, and a version 2 IPS kit. Um, and all, this all came from Handheld Legends. Um, they're probably one of the better places to buy kits such as this, and their shells are extremely nice. Uh, this is one of the, um, they call it a pearl, I'm, I'm not sure why, but it's almost a rubberized coating. Um, my own personal Game Boy, standard Game Boy, uh, is like this, and it's, it's held up extremely well. Um, I've heard some people complain that if they've had the, the paint come up, but it usually comes back to using some harsh cleaners on it. So Handheld Legends uh, stance on that is to never use any you know, cleaners with ammonia or, or bleach or anything like that in it. So since it's uh, close to Halloween, we decided to do an orange and black uh, <laughs> build. So uh, the nice thing about these cases are they're pre-modified. Um, they're trimmed out for uh, the LCD uh, normally, and we'll get an, a shot when this is all apart. You can see here how the, the buttons are almost cut into, and that can be difficult to do uh, you know, in a home setting when you're trimming up the case. Not impossible, but you know, could be a little difficult. And if not done properly, you might get buttons that stick a little bit, but usually can be cured. Um, like we said, got a nice glass screen. We'll set that aside. And the IPS kit, and we'll set that aside for now. So let's focus on our Game Boy Advance. Um, I've got Zelda and uh, some batteries in it. And as you can see, this is what we had to deal with. Um, you had to have the, the angle just right to get everything set and so it would look nice while you're uh, playing a game. But this one's running just fine, so we'll, it's a good starting point. Um, ugly doesn't matter at this point. So let's get it apart. All right, let's get this thing apart. Okay, the Game Boy Advance is a mix of Philips and Tri-Wing. So we've got the one Philips down here and we have Tri-Wing in the rest of the spots. Oops. Go. 
you can see the shell is quite dirty, but could be cleaned up. All right, so our screen comes out from this ribbon cable, which has the um, has a, a bale that's kind of underneath. So you just push the tabs up and then that will release the ribbon. We don't have to pull it out quite yet. But let's go ahead and get these Phillips screws out that are holding the board in place. Now, for the most part, the only thing we're salvaging from this original Game Boy Advance is the main board. Everything else is gonna get swapped out. And since we've already got the bale open, that ribbon will come right out. We may be reusing our rubber diaphragms. I'm not sure if those were in that button box or not. So we'll put those aside, but we're not gonna be reusing the buttons, the actual plastic buttons. Um, just for the sake of this video, let's go ahead and pop this screen out and I can show you the two cases and the differences. sticky. There we go. There's our LCD panel. We'll put that aside. And we will... Well, you know what? We're not going to destroy that because we'll put that LCD back in the case. So let's put the board out of the way for a second. Move these buttons. We're not going to be using them. And here's our new case. And what you can see is how thin this already is and how it's been slightly cut into the buttons. This entire wall, for the most part, has been trimmed away. You can see it's, it's gone here. This little support that's the whole way around also got trimmed out. Um, for the most part, the top and this side are left alone in the mod. Uh, it looks like maybe this very top lip is gone. But otherwise, that's the same. So most, the majority of the mod in the case, if you're modding the original case, would be to trim this side and trim the support. Okay. So just so we don't break that other screen, just go ahead and lay our tape back down in here. And drop that in place. It's not that there's much value left in these old screens because everybody's doing these mods, but you know, a good part's better than a broken part. So, move our battery door. Okay. So let's get into the actual kit. These wires are going to be for our brightness control. It's obviously a shim for something. Attach this to the back. So obviously we're going to use this as an insulator for the actual IPS, P2 
panel. And wow, these IPS panels are so thin. It's hard to believe that, you know, they put out as much light as they do. Looks like a little bit of a backer. Another shim. And our circuit board and our mounting tape. So I'll put that aside for just a second. Okay, you can see the little pads here. Um, you know, maybe we'll get this all under the microscope. Okay. So, what you can see here is the, the little circuit built right under the ribbon. And here is, oops. Here is our controls. So we've got a ground, which we don't use. We have a select pad and we have a right and a left. The yeah, L's kind of hard to see. There's too much glare. Um, but we will attach these, looks like 30 gauge wires. We're going to solder it directly on here. And then we can connect those to the board. Now, I'm not a fan of using all the same color. So I'm gonna get some different colors just so we can keep everything straight. Okay, so here's some 30 gauge wire. We'll cut them onto about the same length. And we'll do that. I'm sure this looks like about 28 gauge that they supplied, but this is more or less just a data path. So we don't need to, to worry too much about it. Um, we'll heat up our iron and we will go ahead and strip it, these wires. for the wire. I'm going to tin them. Like that. We'll take our red one that was supplied with the kit. Now there's nothing wrong with using the wire supplied. It's just that it's easier to keep everything in order whenever um, You know, you've got three different colors. So we're up to temp. Get some fresh solder on our tip. And we will just tin these off real quick. And since we already have the solder flux on there, it should go right on. Okay, we'll set those aside for a second. Okay, so what I'm gonna use here is just some very fine you know, a fine applicator on uh, our flux opposed to the, the paste. And this just makes it a little bit more controlled and we can put it right where we want it. And like I said, we're not going to use that ground. Now I know those blobs look pretty big on the microscope, but it's, it's really not all that much. Oops. Let's get that tip a little wiped off a little better. And when you're using good solder, good flux, you don't have to put heat on anything for very long. Um, Go ahead and trim these back a little bit. We 
When you're soldering, you want to use the absolute bare minimum heat you can before causing any damage. Um, but you don't want to get your heat so low that you cause yourself problems elsewhere. So what are we going to do? Let's go ahead and make our select our brown. We're going to make left green. And we will make right red. Just like that. Now, one of the things you can do to help keep your soldering tip clean, you shouldn't wipe it and then put it away because then that's just gonna build a layer of oxidation. But rather what you should do is coat it up, stick it back on the stand, turn it off. Um, the actual soldering iron I use here at the shop, I've had it probably 25 plus years. It came from my grandfather's television repair shop. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's probably 30 or 35 years old, um, but it's a, it's a real trooper. Okay, so, so we got that done. So uh, let's go ahead and move that. Let's put our, put our circuit board under here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and find what we're looking for. So, Looking for test point two. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna go. Our select button is gonna go here. Okay, so we can get to that in a little bit, but we're gonna address our case first, and we'll come back to it. And then our left and right are gonna go to these. Are the, this is one of the shoulder switches. And one, one of our wires is going to go there, and our other wire is going to go here. Okay, so let's focus back on our shell. You know what, since this is a nice clean shell, and my solder mat's always a mess, let's give ourselves a nice clean place to work. Okay. We need to look into what these actual, this particular kit, um, I've done a, a, a version one IPS install and we've done um, several 101 screens here, but um, we'll have to see what these are. This screen I do know should go the whole way up into the corner. So this is gonna be our mounting tape. Okay, let's put that aside for a second. This is going to be a ribbon. Uh, now I see why. There's a metal backing on this. That's why they obviously give us this uh, insulating film. So this doesn't short at all, if that is a ground. Okay, so we've got a ribbon cable here. So this is going to mount like that. This is what we like to refer to as a Lego connector. Just gotta line it up and it should snap in. But you don't wanna to put too much force. They are fragile. So here again, under the microscope or, you know, old man glasses, either way. Just line it up and it'll snap in. Like I said, be careful. They are fragile, they're thin. And, uh, you know, like the Nintendo Switch is full of them. iPhones are full of them. 
Um, so you get accustomed to working with them, but you don't want to beat them up too bad. Okay, since this says put it on the back, let's put it on the back. Try to line it up nice. And it's just that easy. Okay. And it didn't come with any other adhesive. So, okay, let's be careful with that. So we don't rip that ribbon. Go ahead and get a little bit of double side. Should be enough. Now you can use any kind of double side you want. This is just some very thin 3M tape that I have laying around. And we'll square it up with the bottom. Just push it down. Okay. So far so good. Let's see. And this is a 40 pin board. Okay, one thing to know, and if you've ever done a 101 install, uh, there is two different motherboards on these. There's a, a 38 pin connector, or a 36 pin connector, and then the, the, the 40 pin connector. Um, they're both functionally the same, it's just over the years, I think there was a change in the display drivers, or you know, the display system. But you can see it here. Um, there's the one side and here's the other. So, so is right. This video got a little longer than I was expecting it to be, but there were so many points in the install that I thought would be important for anybody doing the install that I needed to leave it all in. Um, but on that point or on that note, if you would prefer a condensed video with a voiceover and maybe turn this whole process into a eight or 10 minute video, why don't you leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep making videos that are a little bit on the long side, just so you know exactly what you're getting into whenever you're looking at this kind of project for yourself. But anyway, I hope you join us for our part two, which will finish up the video. Um, and please like and subscribe. Thanks.